Good evening and welcome to all you screamers out there far and wide. Let me hear you scream life. Life! Come on, scream life. Life! Because this is Scream Life, the unradio station. I am Jason and we are screaming life today. We're glad you are here and not somewhere else. Though you could be somewhere else doing something else, you're here right now. We hope to be a blessing to you. Today we're talking about giving. The title is Ode to Give. For those of you who find that difficult... This is the place to be. For those of you who know how to give, this is the place to be. We acknowledge God in all things. We ask that you sit back, relax, and we're going to come right back. Enjoy this. And rushing and falling behind But let me tell you about God And the way that she works I mean the way that he works I mean the way that we work You gotta trust in your Lord Everything is in accord Don't rush your fuss You're gonna get yours Close your eyes, your heart, your ears Your mind to the ways and thoughts of mankind And see ye first the kingdom of God And things won't seem so hard You gotta trust your Lord Uh, uh Tell him about it. Trust and obey Trust when afraid Trust when you're paid Trust when you're trade Trust when you fear Trust when you're unclear Trust when you're here Trust when you're near Trust when you're down Trust when you're bound Trust when you're clowns 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 Trust when you it's one way, it's not. Every time you want to stop, you really stop. Trust in the inner, the outer is for the sinners. In fact, this whole rap is for beginners. Those that have talked and walked up on the path know that they get what they want before they act. So I rush. If your respect is due, whatever you don't have is protecting you. It's what you do have to be bringing the drama. Asking it shall be given with a comma. Trump and obey. Trump when afraid. Trump when you pay. Trump when you trade. Trump when you fear. Trump when you're unclear. Trump when you hear. Trump when you're near. Trump when you're down. Trump when you're bound. Trump when you're clown. The thoughts of things they manifest when you decree it But God be looking out for you Putting a stop to what you're about to do In your life and in your circumstances Every time you speak you be taking chances Talking about things that you really don't have to have So when you get them your life turns sad Your life turns bad And why would your God be allowing that? Trust in God, that's where the crown is at It's not in what you get, it's what happens after that So if you think your life is shrinking It may be because you keep thinking Not that intellect is wrong, it's just the beginning It might be time to move on Trump and obey, Trump when afraid, Trump when you pay, Trump when you trade, Trump when you fear, Trump when you're unclear, Trump when you hear, Trump when you're near, Trump when you're down, Trump when you're bound, Trump when you're clown, Trump. All right, trust. That was KRS One from the Spiritual Minded album, song entitled Trust. Trust. Now today the title is O oh, to Give. Now, why is it so hard for people to give sometimes? Well, one thing that that song made me think about was what your trust is in. Yeah. Exactly. If your trust is in a solid foundation and an endless supply of income, then you really wouldn't have a problem giving. If someone was giving you, oh, I don't know, for some people, but let's just say $10 million a week, I guess for the average person that would be enough to the point where giving wouldn't really be difficult yeah, but when you work to obtain certain things and you work to obtain an amount for what your work is worth yeah. and then someone just comes along and says well will you give some of what you've obtained right. to me not asking to do something for it they just want you to give it and in some cases that can be difficult I mean not wanting to give all the time doesn't make you evil but it is difficult at times. Right. It's part of what we acknowledge and why it's hard 
to give. I like how you said um, it's when you have to, so usually it's when it's out of sacrifice. Um, when you have to give something that you've worked for or even something that's valuable to you mm -hmm. because you see someone has a need, sometimes it's hard because of whatever that certain thing means to you, whether it be clothing. Sometimes I know someone who has a lot of clothes. They have so many clothes. They, they don't see it, but they do. Yeah. And it's kind of hard for them to just give it because each article of clothing means something to that person, whether it be where they got it from or um, what it uh, reminds them of. Those articles of clothing are important to them. Right. So there may be someone who has a need for clothes where you have it in access, but because mm -hmm. you want to keep it because of what it may mean to you, it'll be hard to give. So, you know, right yeah. along with what you're saying, I, I agree. I agree with that statement too in that in that giving giving is in a way a sacrifice and giving up oneself mm -hmm. because when you give the smallest of things it can mean a whole nother definition of someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Yeah, I definitely think giving enlightens not enlightens but lifts people up. Mm -hmm. Enlightens whatever they're carrying with them, whatever burden they have mm -hmm. cuz some people, you know, as the phrase says, sometimes life hits you hard. Yeah. And some people are just down, I guess, on their luck. And things are just not going well for them. Mm -hmm. Things can just turn on you. Yeah. And when you give, it, it helps them to be able to stand. And I think in not giving, there's definitely a fear there. Mm -hmm. uh, so not to just throw people out there. But um, I was watching something recently where these comedians gathered together. And one comedian was he does a late night show and he was saying how he only uses his money from his stand up comedy and doesn't ever touch the money he gets from the late night shows he does now he's been doing his late night show for years mm -hmm. I mean since he was very young but he never touches it because he's afraid you know just in case something might happen where he loses his job or uh, mm -hmm. he's not able to do what he's doing anymore to be able to but then hold on and also have a backup plan. It's, it's also um, because it in, in doing that, I, I mean, I see that a little bit differently. With, with that situation, you're talking about someone who's living off of what they make as a stand-up as opposed to what they're given for a late-night show, staying in the grind mm -hmm. to, to stay hungry for, for that. Now, why store up all the money? Well, it may not be a fear of losing a job or something or or anything like that, but it, it could be a fear of of not having something in when he's ready to stop doing stand up. You know, what what does the money really mean to the person? You can't really say that. But if you're living for money, if if what you do with your money is it just lavish on yourself, then you want to have that in place and it's more so I believe to have something you can look at and it be a guarantee yeah right. if I'm working and I'm making this kind of money it may not be as much as what I, I make doing this other thing but if I just set that money aside I have something like a guaranteed survival kit yeah. right. when it all comes down to it I'll be able to do it so it may not be a fear of, of losing a job but the uncertainty of the future right also, that being said, you have to think of the amount he may be getting. Yeah. Um, and it's the type of lifestyle you want to live. Yeah. So if you want to live a luxurious maintain lifestyle, yeah. you have yeah. to maintain it. Just like um, so, there was a comedian, actually, who said, was talking about Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. And he was saying he has to have llama money, money to feed his animals. Yeah. You know, who has money for that? You know, he has, to he has a mansion. He has... Uh, lots of things, but he has to maintain it or it's going to go to the ground. So to have money or if you want to maintain a certain type of lifestyle, you got to have the uh, funds to do it. So that goes back to why do you want that money? You know, I think what you were saying was more so along the lines of keeping it so you can maintain that luxurious lifestyle. And I, um, Spiger, what mm -hmm. it seems like you're saying is there's nothing wrong with having a guarantee 
as a backup plan. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I was saying that 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 could draw into the fear, mm -hmm. the fear of what may be coming. Like I said, maybe not a loss of job. Maybe just I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But I want to maintain this lifestyle. Lifestyle, exactly. Right. You know, so the fear comes from just the unknown. Mm -hmm. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. Exactly. Hey. They may be, uh, TV may just go out of style. There may be no need for it. Look what happened with reality internet. TV. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and, and the internet. Go to YouTube. People don't watch stuff hardly anymore. You got more people streaming live and going back and streaming shows. People are not just doing CNN. I mean, you got the president on Ustream, you know, with different events that they're going, more local stuff. And they have things for, I mean, even... I mean, I looked on it the other day, and you had UFC fight, a <laughs> UFC fight that you can pay for and watch on Ustream. Mm. They have a way to do that now, so it's taking it to a place where maybe we don't need television anymore. Yeah, you know, and and then anybody can do it. So that that, that kind of go back to what I was going to say about um, selfishness. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why people don't give. I think there's a fear of not having. Yeah, later yeah, but yeah. it's usually selfishness it's about you and yourself and um i consider selfishness selfishness to be a desire to gain many times at all costs without considering how others are affected okay yeah, so yeah. um when we think of ourselves above others we tend to leave someone in need to fulfill our own lust mm -hmm. or our own want not something you need but you just want to have this now we have the argument of well I work for it I should have it I, I work for my millions so I should be able to live like a millionaire yeah. okay but there's still people who are in need who are working and who are trying to just keep getting knocked down so yeah. that's that's what I think because sometimes people will get to the top by being dirty Right. By stepping on people, by backstabbing, by putting someone down or, you know, lying, mm -hmm. different things like that. So mm -hmm. when you're selfish for something, it, it doesn't even have to be money. It can, it's usually money. Yeah. But it can be fame or position or status. You'll backstab someone or you'll put someone down just so you can get what you want. Yeah. And once you got it, you you don't want to give it because you fear, you know, how am I going to maintain this particular position right and all this all all of this all always goes back to where your trust is in exactly like i started off before when you have an endless source of income you don't have to worry about what the next paycheck is coming you don't have to worry about working to maintain a lifestyle exactly. if the means of maintaining it is just given to you exactly and that's what makes it hard to give when you work for it when you're working for this, you're working towards something like uh, Spidey was saying about the comedian. When you're working towards being able to maintain this lifestyle, no matter what comes or no matter what I choose to do with it, the fear comes in that you're working for this. Mm -hmm. It's all based on what you do. Right. And that's really where this all comes down to what your trust is in. Get more into it. We're going to, uh, you know, take a break. We don't want y'all to get too exhausted. <laughs> but we're going to keep this going We're going to go right into the next song We got uh, A uh, segment We haven't done in a while Random yeah. rant yeah. coming up After this song And it is entitled Rita by Sean Locke Enjoy Destruction in the eyes of the youth What is a lie, what is true Heart heavy and torn apart The spark of fire in you I'm here, watching him, watching his peers Guzzling years in misdirection Does correction come with election Or is it all an infection? He questions, and there was silence I was quiet now No one got words to reply I cross my T's and dab my eyes If it's like this till I die He's shaking before his eyes another life spent taking blames God Cause he feels he has forsaken soul licking And you can tell he was only seconds from breaking A still quiet voice was his awakening It was the Lord he said Similar 
Sarah's circumstance, but she thought she lost true love. Refusing to give in the lust for rubs is like ducking slugs, especially when they coming from the hand of a man who say, Yeah, I care so much. He said, Trust, nothing will ever come between us. No situation could defeat us together forever. Love leaders, he lied. Oh, he lied. Lost all respect after being denied Wanted the bride before the time was right She cried, Lord, why? Why so much pain? Her eyes locked to the sky Feeling disowned and alone She heard, who am I? I am the Lord, I will supply You gotta go and Here it'll be okay Don't give up, just let my love wipe the tears Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one that goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. You're not alone. Hey, hey, brother. That was Sean Locke with Reet Ryder. I thought it was Rita. Good we said it again because I said it the wrong time the first time. And it's a good song talking about allowing God to help you where you need help. Allow him to give to you of himself as he does for us every day. We're going into a segment we haven't done in quite a while. I'm not sure if we've done it since season one. Mm. But a uh, random rant, yes, and it is um, not really systematic chaos. It's really just us discussing different topics and going on about them. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring out is a lot of situations where we as Christians find ourselves being told how to live our lifestyles or how to go about in our Christian walk by those who don't really lead that same life. Or those who don't really walk the Christian walk. They're not giving themselves to the same commitment. They speak on a much more theoretical level. Things that they've thought about. They've observed. They've watched. And now they want to tell you how to do it. But um, really, just thinking of it logically, if someone was an officer and I'm just a pedestrian, I'm saying, you know what? I really, I don't think you should stop at this point. I think you should do it this way. And even if I might be right, he's he's the officer, so I wouldn't really tell him how to do his job if I'm not committed to the same thing. I haven't read all of his criteria of his job that he has to study. It depends. So, it, I mean, when he's, I mean, just if he has the commitment, he's had to study to get to where he is to be able to be well, committed to that job. It, you don't. It's not that you could, you don't find yourself in those situations. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, for the officer, you can't know his job better than he does. Right. You can study it, but you haven't committed to it. You can say he's not doing right by his work or whatever. If he is not doing it, he knows that. Mm-hmm. Because he wouldn't right. get those right. cra- exactly. credentials yeah, without knows, it. Yeah. So to think you know his job better, no, he just, he knows what he's doing and he knows when he's taking advantage of the law. He knows when he's taking advantage of people, but you don't know his job better than he does if you hadn't committed to it. Yeah. And it, and then, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I agree. And what yeah. you say does go along with one of my things to rant on. And that is when people use scripture out of context, yeah. when people use scripture to kind of prove a point 
of whatever it is they want to do. One of the scriptures, you know, I wanted to talk about today is you have not because you ask not. And that's one scripture that people take that one part out of, but they don't think of the whole thing. Yeah. And I'll talk about that when we talk about it. So remember this moment in Random Rant when we bring up that scripture. Oh, yeah, definitely. Both things, things to consider. But we're going to get right back into the discussion. You know, just some things just for you to think about. Um, what kind of things do we give? What kind of things can we give to people? Right now we're about to play Michael Bublé. And he's going to discuss some of these things to answer my question. Michael Bublé, Can't Buy Me Love. Can't Buy Me Love. Enjoy. If you all I got to give, if you say you love me too. I may not have a lot to give, but what I got, I'll give to you. I don't care too much for money, cause money can't buy me love, can't buy me love. Tell everybody, tell me so. I don't care too much for money Cause money can't buy me love Say you love me too. I may not have a lot to give, but what I got, I give to you. I don't care too much for money, cause of money, money. Say you don't need no diamond ring, I'll be satisfied. Tell me that you want the kind of things that money you just can't buy. So I'm gone like a breath in the 
the world more than I love you. I gave up my heart. She shoved it in my face. What I really need is someone to replace. Lord, what do I do when I love the world more than I love you? I gave up my heart. She shoved it in my face. What I really need is some of your grace. Yes. That last song was Los Bad Love off of the mixtape he did, Unconditional. Oh, yeah. We're still talking about giving and owed to give. Now, in recognizing the kind of things we can give, sometimes what you give a person can make the difference in the person. Uh, One of the things you can give is your services. It's not always money. Sometimes you may just give your services to someone. Sometimes you may not give someone who's asking you for something money or the money that they're asking for, but you may give them a meal. You may give them some crackers. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you look for the immediate need. What is the need that you have? And you look to fulfill it. Because like we said before, in the fears that we may have in giving sometimes, because I mean, you don't necessarily trust the person because you don't know them. You don't know what their intentions are, what their motives are. And if your care is for the person, sometimes you're a little nervous about just giving them money because you're unsure of what they may do with it yeah. because of where they are. They may use it to hurt themselves. That, that's true in many cases. You never want to give people who, y- you know, yeah, you, you want to help them out. I want to bring up a point, and it's going to seem kind of minor because of the picture I'm going to use, but I'm going to bring this up anyway. There's a book written a long time ago, I remember from my childhood, called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Oh, that's my book. And it starts off, if you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk. And it's that, it's an ongoing cycle. I don't remember if you ask, if he asks for milk, then he's going to want a straw. straw. He wants, he gets a straw, he's going to want a napkin. napkin. Because in this process of giving, we're talking about on the receiving end, mm-hmm. people tend to see what can come next what more can I get from who's giving now if you don't look at it from a perspective of giving for the sake of giving or giving because of the need you can get worn out from a mouse like that or a person like that you're always asking for this you're always asking for that well what do you expect of a person in need if a person needs this or a person needs that, a person needs money, a person needs clothes, a person needs shelter, all these things that you may have in abundance, what is the problem with giving? Yeah. Okay. If it's not motivated by love, we've yes. done a show on love, but we don't not talk about it because we've done a show on it. Exactly. we got to know the difference between giving and giving in love. Exactly. Right. If difference. you're not giving in love, you're not really giving right. Exactly. You may be meeting the need, but what do you what does the, what does that do for you as you, a person? You give exactly. begrudgingly. You give begrudgingly. God doesn't bless that. Mm-hmm. Right. He I mean you can the person will benefit from the things that they get, but you won't. Exactly. You won't get what God has to give. It's the Bible says it's blessed more blessed to give than to receive. But the beautiful thing about God yes. is what he gave to us. Hallelujah. He gave us his only begotten son. Uh-huh. And whosoever believes in him should not perish, but may have everlasting life. And with that gift he's given us, we can give to other people. Exactly. And for those who receive it, it's a blessing on both ends. We can rejoice in that a person has come in. They'll rejoice in the new life that they live and all of these strange ways of looking at things. I mean, I've been talking all week to people. There's a strange doctrine out there Mm -hmm. that people are believing. And I'm going to just go ahead, if if y'all don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and address it about man as God. And I'm just I'm just going to just come out and say it that that is absolutely false. Mm -hmm. 
I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ right now. I speak against it because man is not God. Man did not create God in his image. Man was created by God. In and God's in God's image. Mm-hmm. And if you believe that you are a creator, then you tell me something you've created. I'm not talking about making a baby. That's not a creation. If you create something, you can control it. Exactly. A man makes a computer, he can control that. Mm-hmm. He makes a crane or a piece of machinery, he can control that. He decides when it does what it does, mm-hmm. how it functions, and it cannot operate outside of its program, mm-hmm. what man put in it. Now, you create a baby, and you tell me how long that baby's going to live. Mm-hmm. You tell me that baby's going to turn out this way. Mm-hmm. You tell me how, how tall that baby's going to be. Right. You know? But, um, just to go along with what you're saying about the computer, the computer is made up of things that were here that you did not create. Re- you right. can make stuff. You can produce things of things that are already here. Right. You can concoct something, but you do not create. Because everything you make comes from something that's already that's here. Saying, make. Yeah, you can make, yeah, yeah. but you can't create. You can make, you can't create. And what's the manipulate. difference? Manipulate. Really? <laughs> yeah, you can manipulate things that are already here. Exactly. But you can't create anything. Amen. Anything that you think you create can create, I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing that you can do. A tree. I was given this example before about a tree. Now, I'm not speaking ill of anybody who believes this. I'm just trying to shed a little bit of light on this. If you believe that you can create a tree by planting a seed in there, then why, what is it that you do? You water it. You tend to it. You can do the different things. But before you were here, a tree was here. Yeah. In the Bible's... uh, in the, in the Bible, when it talks about the creation in Genesis, the last thing that was created was man. Mm-hmm. And what we've got to get from that, if not anything else, is that man is not required for the earth to flourish. Exactly. And if you look at what man has done since he's been on earth, it's done the opposite oh, yeah. of causing the earth to flourish. Well, yeah. All these buildings up and everything. I'm not speaking ill about man. But all I'm saying is man is limited. Man can't create. If man was wiped from the face of the earth. Now this is a theory. This is not Bible. I want you just to consider it. If man was wiped from the face of the earth, what would the earth be like? And my answer to that is balanced. Mm -hmm. Earth would be balanced. Look at all the things that we've done. When people talk about global warming, you talk about pollution in the air. What is pollution? If the stuff here is already here, well, the oil that we get comes from the earth, but it was in the earth. We brought it from, yeah, what is it doing in the air? Mm -hmm. That's bringing disruption to the perfect setup that God had and said that it was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, if we try and rearrange a perfect setup, a very good setup, of course you're going to see disasters happening. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the things you do, it's the spirit that you're in when you're doing it. We're talking about giving. If you're going to give, give in love. Otherwise, there's no blessing in it. Mm -hmm. There's no blessing in it. You can say that you're God, then reward yourself for the things that you've done. Mm -hmm. Bring yourself out of a thing. I'm sick and tired of people saying that they are self-made anything. Mm -hmm. You didn't make yourself anything. If you are successful in life, it's because people along the way helped you get there. There's no successful businessman that sold anything to himself and Mm -hmm. made a (laughs) success out of that. You made it by selling stuff to people, even drug pushers. They can't do nothing without people. It's evil, it's wrong, and it's still need in need of other people. Exactly. You're a success. A Christian, a true Christian will say mm-hmm. that I am what I am because right. God made me this. Okay. You recognize that. You recognize that God did the work. Amen. But all of this, uh, I know I'm, I'm going <laughs> he's on. He's rambling. Saying, well, he's I, ranting. I, I, he's ranting. Yeah, I, I'm not ranting. I'm not rambling. This yeah, is the not, truth. Yeah, you can go back rambling. and look at it. Ain't nothing that I've said that's false. Amen. And if you believe that is false, go back and look at it and check what you think first. Mm-hmm. Then come back. Leave a comment. Yes. We'll be here. We'll address, uh, it. we'll address it. I mean, you can leave a comment on the chat. 
You can uh, leave a comment on the Ustream page. You can leave a comment on the Spiger Diori on uh, Facebook page. All of that stuff. I don't mind people saying what they feel. But understand, it's not about what you feel. It's about what is the truth. And if you say what you say out of emotion, out of what you feel, your feelings will change. Amen. And the facts that you stand on will change. Amen. Because facts, as man sees them, are subject to change. You don't know anything. Amen. <laughs> you don't. Amen. Everything that you think you know, you know by faith. Amen. You don't know your name. You don't know if the parents that you have are really your parents. What exactly. are you talking That's about? True. You, got you know because you have faith. How do you know that the... The child wasn't switched in, an, in, a, uh, in a hospital. hospital. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? You're a child. You don't know. How do you know that that's your birth certificate? You don't know. Truman Show. Truman, yeah. <laughs> you don't know that. And if you think you know all these things, you go back and look and say, how can I prove it? You wow. spend the rest of your life trying to prove that your name is what it is. Or you can accept what you've been told and operate in that truth. And live, live mm -hmm. as you give. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the important part is living as you give. I know I'm, I'm going, but you know it's it's hot up in here. This is insanity, <laughs> and pull something out. And, yeah. and the thing is too, what he said goes directly what we were saying about a beautiful mind, and that 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 one thing that knows creativity, and that one of the most some that is most creative is when something when something is creative and others create things off of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that, and that's how, and you know, people can't really say anything about that kind of thing without it being that I just already created something out of a God-given thing, but mm -hmm. they don't admit it, you know, because they'll say that they like the tree example. The tree, I mean, you plant the roots and the, I mean, you didn't do anything of that. You put water in it. You know what? Do you control rain? You know, can't do it. Is it's going? It's going to come one way or another, because God has a say so in it. Amen. And you know that's one thing that people don't understand. And go ahead. And the thing is, <laughs> the manipulation of the creation that's here is only due to the will of the Creator. Exactly. You tell me someone who puts their all into a computer system, and someone's just going to hack into it. Yes, if you yes. know the system, if you know how it works, then you know how the hacking works. You know how they can get in, and you so can. you can design it in a way where they can't manipulate it. But the manipulation of the creation here is only due to the will of the creation's creator. Amen. Yeah. Concrete wouldn't be able to be made if it wasn't, if that wasn't yielded by He who created this world. Yeah. All we're doing is building on top of an already established world, and we call ourselves creators. We, we act as if we're creating. You're not creating anything unless you go back to the origin. And oh, yeah. you can't even go back to your origin. How on earth can you say you're a god and have these people... How long can you go without even knowing you've been adopted? God is eternal. You, and in eternity, how are you restricted by time? Time can limit your own mind. The most powerful thing man has is their mind, and even that's limited. You can't even conjure up all of your memories because of time. Your limits are concealed in time versus a God who dwells in eternity, which is outside of time. How can a God who exists in eternity forget mm -hmm. if there's okay. no time to restrict the memories? And see, this is, this is something that was brought up before. I want to address this as well. The point about Jesus himself. He was a man. He was a man, but he was also God. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to do what he did, I'm not just talking about laying hands on sick and they recover. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says that we'd be able to do that as believers anyway. Amen. We'd be able to speak in new tongues. He said we could do that anyway. Lay hands on the sick, they recover. Yeah. The lame will walk. Mm -hmm. right. The blind will see. Mm -hmm. That's not all in what he did. He commanded the elements mm -hmm. to behave. Mm -hmm. He called life back into a dead man's body. And for those who have the power to do that as well, you try raising yourself from the dead. You can't do it. You do that. You can't. Now all of this, all, well, well that's, that's what was written in the Bible. That Bible was written by a man and everything that you know was written by a man. Mm -hmm. And everything that you think you know 
was written or told to you in some way or form, shape or capacity, that's every single thing that you know that you were not allowed to see with your eyes. You can prove nothing from what you think you know. You can't prove any of it. If you say that you can, you'll, you'll waste your time. You'll waste your time trying to do it. You couldn't prove that man walked on the moon. Even if it did happen, you can't prove it. You can't prove it. I've seen it on video. I saw Tom Hanks in space, too. Did he go up there? How was his life there? Apollo 13. That's film. I'm not saying that this didn't happen. I'm not talking about conspiracy <laughs> theories. I want you to get it correct. What I'm getting at is that what you think you know, you really don't know. And everybody operates to a measure of faith. And how far you go in it is, is how much you're willing to accept what is true. And the reason why people don't accept it is because of their motivation in it. Why do you want to do these things? Why do you want to think this way? Because it's beneficial to self. Mm -hmm. Look at the 12 disciples. What did they benefit in self when they went out preaching the gospel? Amen. After after the crucifixion, they ran and hid. Amen. And then they come back after something happened. It talks about it in Acts chapter 2. If you know, you can go look that up. The Holy Ghost came upon them. They went out with a new determination. They had exactly. seen the risen Savior. Yeah. Something in them told them that they've got to do this. They were stoned, but they got up. They came back. Mm -hmm. They were crucified. They were unwilling to change what they said because of what they saw, what they, what they experienced, and what they knew. And there's documentation of that. Whether you accept it or not is your choice. God gives us the choice. There is more proof in the Bible record of everything than there is anywhere else. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And if you want to spend your life trying to prove that, you can do it. I already know it. Mm -hmm. I already know it. I know God. And he knows me. It's all, mm -hmm. It all boils down to faith. That's what it is. Faith. Um, and experience. It's faith and experience. Because if you have faith in something and your experience with that something is it doesn't work, you're going to change your faith. Yep. You're going to move along. Exactly. And that's why it's a no-so thing. If you're a believer, be if you're a Christian, and, uh, I, I'm, and I'm not using the term loosely. I don't mean you just go to church on Sunday. I mean you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You recognize that he died on the cross for your sins Make three days eight. Three days later, he rose from the dead exactly. with all power in his hands. That is who I'm referring to. That's what a believer believes. Um, you try the word of God, which is the Holy Bible. And if you believe that and you try it and you test it, you're going to find it to be true. So in the end, it is all faith. And going back to the topic um, in the Bible referring to, and this is another thing to prove that it's true when it talks about it being more blessed to give than to receive because in God, when you give, you do receive. There's something that comes over you. There's a true satisfaction that you receive and a joy that you receive from giving. And also, the Bible says that it pleased the Father to bruise His Son. It was pleasing to God for Jesus to die because He realized that in giving His Son, He's going to receive us in heaven. That's his love for us. So like he was right. saying earlier about giving, it's not just an act. It has to come from your heart or you're yeah. going to give and you won't receive. In yeah. giving, in true giving, like the Bible says, in giving, when you give in love, you do receive. You do. So that's the kind of, I don't know if it's irony or the, I, I wouldn't say irony, but it's kind of the um, word I can't find right now. But the interesting thing is that you give. And, and you receive at the same time when you give in love. Exactly. And, and then, and then, what people really forget is that that we are a creation, and God gave His Son for a creation that He's spoken out of. Amen. Yeah. I mean, what exactly. what what, 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 what do we have? No man, a man doesn't have a say so unless God permits him to. Amen. In anything that they do, okay. and and then you have people who try to act, who will try to say like they do. And not even say they'll, they'll, they'll try to live that kind of style, but the fact is that they're running from it because they know exactly that that is the truth because they don't have anything that they can do nor say about it if God interferes with it. 
Amen. And the fact that God died for us as a man, but the mm-hmm. fact is that he was the the fact is is that he died for something that God created. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. created out of words. He didn't even have to put much effort. He didn't have to put effort in it. But because right. it was his will, we were created. And the thing is, he's given us the abil- the liberty to be able to go and deny him. And, and and this shows what happens when you give somebody a little bit of freedom or what they do with it. Amen. The consequences make choices significant. <laughs> exactly. And, peop- and if you're still wondering why it's so hard to give... Then you haven't been listening this, this yeah, whole time. You couldn't have been listening. We yeah, wonder why you know. it's hard to give because what do they do with the gift? Mm. How can you trust someone with a gift? I mean, God has given us a world. And in the beginning, we had dominion over all that existed. Mm-hmm. But then we started getting a little bit into ourselves. And once we were presented with the idea... Now, I would go into Paul into not doing, getting into these philosophies out here and everything. In Colossians, you can read it yourself. But the idea is you have to keep your eyes on God. That is the only endless supply you'll have. You're not self-made and you're not self-saved. If you believe in that theory, then you can be your own God in your own little world. But as for the rest of us... And don't look for anybody to help you. Yeah, don't look for grace. Don't look for mercy. Don't look for blood to wash your sins away. You be busy working to get your sins removed, and it can't happen. We can't fix our sin with physics and logics and philosophies. The truth is presented, and it's a gift. Truth is a gift. And the fact that God is not the author of confusion... That is the gift he gives to us. And in recognizing this gift, we do recognize in living how much we owe for love divine, how much we owe because Christ is mine. And what he is to me, I know. I cannot tell how much I owe. Bishop G.F. Patterson. G.E. Patterson, I'm sorry.
That was Bishop G.E. Patterson, the late Bishop G.E. Patterson, with how much I owe for love divine. I know that if you've been listening, and I can tell you from in the studio, this is a show that will have to continue. So we're going to have to come back with part two. We're at the, the end of it now. But again, this is open for discussion Spiger Diori, S P Y G R E D E O R I, at is is on ReverbNation.com. Go to ReverbNation.com, and you can leave comments about the show on there. Spiger Diori does respond to comments. Jace N J A S E, and the letter N, capital N. He's on ReverbNation.com. You can go on his page. You can leave comments. Jace N does respond to comments. Yes, All right. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention, too. If you're in the Jacksonville area or plan to be in the Jacksonville area on the 14th of August at around 2 o'clock at Friendship Park, the information will be given to you if you have questions about that. Jayla Smiles organization, the Jayla Smiles, will be hosting a back to school such and so for those who are going back to school the kids you can go to www.jaylessmile.org and if you have kids from the age 13 or 14 and down you can register them online leave comments donate help out this is a worthy cause we've said it before we'll say it again until we run out of time and even then, we'll let somebody else carry it on. But it is a worthy cause. Do support Jayla Smiles Incorporated. Uh, before we close, you know, we always have a word of prayer. Please take into consideration the things that were said. If you completely disagree with what you've heard on this show, with nobody's coming against you, you may not see what any of us have said here today and if you don't again those venues that I gave you you can go there you can leave your comments and everything we'll address we'll have open dialogue it's it's fine it's absolutely fine and nobody's trying to beat anybody over the head this is not about whose argument is better it's not about who can make the most points this is about the truth being shown it's about the truth being spoken and being lived we scream life, but we live life. Amen. And if you hear what I'm saying, then come join us. Right at the top of the Ustream page. Click join. We'll let you know when we're on, when other stuff is happening. And uh, we'll get back to you on next week. But we will not leave before we say a word of prayer. And as we close, what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, 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 as well as pray. Father in heaven, so many times we listen and hear what you're saying to us. And it is so easy sometimes to hear something that someone else says that makes us feel different or makes us see things that is not maybe a popular way of looking at things and to be caught up in that and not realize that we're deceived whether we're believers or not Lord it's so easy sometimes to get caught up in the wrong thing you know our hearts you know our motivations you know the things that we're in need of we ask that you would touch all those who are listening those who are part both now and in the future, God, you know the needs and the heart. We ask that you would go in that place in their heart and touch where they need you. Touch in their mind where lies have come in, where non-truths have come in, where philosophies of man have come in and taken over their thinking. <laughs> you are greater than anything that we could ever come up with. And God, we ask that you would touch in us that we receive all that you have to give us and meet us back again. Help us to live life as we scream life to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I do want to thank everyone for joining us this week. 
the title of the show is Oh to Give. I urge you this week to give, give in love, and watch your enemies be confused. Give in love and let your enemies be confused. Give to them in love and watch them be confused. Much thanks to God Almighty who is around us, who is with us, who is in us, and makes us able to do what we do. Uh, thank El Nez for coming out, for Leahy for coming out, for our host Jason for coming out, because the truth of the matter is they don't have to come, but this is a worthy cause in their eyes. And Gazelle in the back who's been just an active supporter in all that we do. Everyone listening, we thank you and bid you peace, love, and scream life. That wasn't everybody. Peace, love, and scream life. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.